Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like all four major sports and all the teams within those sports, you'll like the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Okay, today we are going to be doing the second part of our over-under points projections from odds makers for each NHL team. We started out with Anaheim to Minnesota. You can check that video out after this one. Uh, if you haven't watched it already, I don't know why you wouldn't have. Everybody in the land has already seen it, I'm sure. But today we're going to be going from Montreal to the Winnipeg Jets. And uh, pro- what we'll do is we're going to go look at the odds makers projection for the season totals for each team then I'm going to say what I think is over or under for each team. Now, I'm a professional handicapper, so I do this for a living, actually. And last year, crushed these, did really well, actually crushed hockey in general. If you like to have fun and make money, bpowpicks.com. I'll put the link down in the comment section. Uh, also, you, I'll, I'll put, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a link. You can go in for free for a while and check it out down in the comment section. Go hit it and uh, get have the Telegram app. It's a Telegram link, and uh, you can be part of the frolic. But uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at that. We're going to say over or under, and you are going to do the same thing in the comment section, and then you know, everything will be right in the land. All right, let's check out. First team down here. We're looking down here. These are the ones from up to Minnesota. We are now in Montreal. And Montreal is 70 and a half points. Now, this is an interesting one. 70 and a half points for the Montreal Canadiens. First, let's look at the division that they're in. And uh, I actually think Montreal is going to be better than last year. This is weird to say this, okay? I think they're going to be a better team than last year. 70 and a half points better, though, compared to 55 points? I don't see it. And the main reason why is they just too many teams, and you're going to hear this a lot as we go through these, too many teams got better. Buffalo is probably better. Detroit, Ottawa. We'll see how much better when we look at their over and under totals. So I just don't think Montreal is going to hit 70 and a half. Not with uh, Malton Bowl being their uh, goaltender for them. Jake Allen, who gets injured a lot. Um, the overall lineup, Suzuki's still young. Just got named captain today, too. But, you know, co- they could take a step forward. Caulfield as well. But the overall lineup is just not strong enough compared to what other teams did in their, their division this year. Goaltending isn't great. Defense is pretty meh. Like, it's it's probably going to be a tough year. I think they're going to try hard because St. Louis is fantastic. And you're going to see a high compete level, which is always good. But really, Montreal fans, you don't really want them to win that much this year, do you? Everybody wants Bedard or Michkov. Or I think it's Fantilli. Uh, There's a lot of great players up there in this draft. Even in the top 10 alone, you can pick up a sweet player. So this is probably not the draft that even Montreal fans want them to crush or surprise with. So I'm going under 70 and a half. All right. Next. Nashville Predators at... Or sorry, yeah, 70 and a half. At 97 and a half. They opened at 84 and a half last season. They finished with 97. They had over. I had over last. No, no, actually. Uh, yeah, they surprised me last season. I don't, I don't think I did have over. But this season for Nashville, I think they're going to do really, really well. Mostly because other there's other teams in their division that have taken a step that I think is going to, are going to take a step down this year. Not to mention exp- uh, the, the feeding frenzy that's going to be with Chicago, Winnipeg, and uh, Arizona. So they went out and got Mc- 
Ryan McDonough, which I think is an absolutely beautiful move for what they've decided to do. I don't know if what they should decided to do was the right decision, that being not rebuild and keep on trying to win a cup. But if you're going to, getting Ryan McDonough is fantastic. And they gave up virtually nothing for him. As well as uh, picking up Nino Niederreiter, a very underrated two-way forward in the league that is just going to fit this system, I think, perfectly. The thing about Nino Niederreiter is his, the, the knock on him has been his intensity level throughout the year. I don't know if you can play for the Nashville Predators and not be affected by the, and not, and not be affected by the intensity level that this team has throughout the year. You're really going to stick out like a sore th thumb if you're not intense on this team. I think it's going to help his game a lot, and I really love the play. So, And also getting Kevin Lankin in as a backup, that's huge. Juicy Saros was played way too much last year because Riddich was absolutely horrible. And uh, Kevin Lankin in, if he actually does, is the goaltender – here because they have who is their other goaltender? Ah, oh, Connor Ingram, right? Who did fairly well. He could take the spot as well. I think either one of them are going to be better than Riddich. And that help and Juicy Saros will hopefully be able to have to play less. And that's going to be better for the team in general. So I think if we look at the their uh, division that they're in. I think Nashville can jump Dallas, uh, can jump even St. Louis. I think it's very possible that Nashville and Minnesota are going to fight it out for second spot in this division. So, yes, I'm taking Nashville over 97 and a half. Next, New Jersey Devils. And this is really interesting, New Jersey. Uh they have the over-under at 88.5. That is a 20-some point jump from last year. And I really love a lot of the things that New Jersey did here. Uh, getting Andre Pilat is exactly what they needed because the biggest problem that New Jersey has had so far has been their two-way forward group, like their forwards playing both sides of the ice well, uh, mostly because they're young, not because they don't have the tools. I think a lot of the players here have totally have the tools to be fantastic two-way players, and getting Andre Pilat is going to help that a lot. So I love the pickup of getting Pilat. Hughes is every, I think everybody thinks Hughes is going to be a 100-point player as long as he doesn't get hurt. Um, Jesper Brad, I mean, this lineup looks really solid. It's just super young. Losing Zaka hurts. Getting Halla is okay. It's pretty much a wash. The big question I think on everybody's mind is, will Banachek turn out okay? I think he may really turn out well because Washington has never developed goaltenders well. And from what I've seen from New Jersey, they've been pretty good at it. Uh, they, the only problem has been injuries, really, with goaltenders, not proper development. So... I think it could be really well. Now, the question is, do I think they're going to have a 26-point increase this year? And I think I'm going to have to go under for now. But I don't want to. Uh, for some reason, I really want this team to do well. I love Jonas Siegenthaler, Hamilton. I love the way it's built. And it's going to eventually be a super strong team. The question is, is it going to be this year or not? I'm going to lean to the under, but I'm not putting this into a pick to my clients. By the way, I am a professional handicapper. My link will be in the comment section where you can go in for free and get my picks for a while. And then you can choose whether you want to sign up after you've made a whole crap load of money. Next, New York Islanders. Uh, oh, sub up to the channel, everybody, too. Sub up to the channel. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. The New York Islanders, and man, there's two ways of looking at the New York Islanders this year. And there's pretty good merit for both. They have the Islanders getting 90, uh, over under 94 points, which would be a 10-point increase from last year. 
And okay, so on one side, you have the Islanders basically had a horrible schedule last year. They had to be on the road for the first 14 games. They they had made it to the semifinals in COVID years with limited time off for two years in a row. And they burnt out last year. And there's really good reason to believe that that's the case. However, in those times, I was saying Barry Trotz should get coach of the year if this team even makes the playoffs. Because on paper, this team is not fantastic, let's face it. Josh Bailey's on the downside. Anders Lee is probably, you know, he had some good years, but he's not spectacular. He's I like him, but is he a first line? Like, is there is he a first line left winger like a Rantanen or a Dry Seidel? You know, like is do they they don't have a superstar on this team. They go on pure depth. And the depth is not very high scoring depth. So they rely heavily on their defensive play. And old players like Zach Parise and uh, Kyle Palmieri that are way on the downside. So they're hoping for big jumps from Bobillier and Wallstrom, which with the new coach could very well happen. The problem I have as well is that their replacement players are not very good. And they very seldom use them because of it. There's not much depth on the island, this Islanders team. And they end up overplaying their veterans. And even when they were playing well and making it in the playoffs, they tend to die, tended to die out in uh, the latter half of the season. And I don't think that's going to change, honestly. I think Ilya Sorokin is really huge. I love Ilya Sorokin. He's probably going to have a beastly year. But I'm still going to lean to the under on that point total here. Um, I just, New Jersey has gotten better. They have teams that have gotten better in their division or about the same. 94 and a half, just maybe they'll prove me wrong. But maybe, I don't know much about the coach that's going in now. So they obviously like him a lot, but I have to see it. For now, I'm going on the under. Probably not giving this to my clients. Uh, comment in the comment section if you like sp if you like making money and having fun with hockey. Uh, I'll I'll send you my link there. You can hit it, and uh, you can go over for free. We made six thousand dollars last year. The average person who makes the average type bet. Some people made sixty thousand. So if you like that sort of thing, you can head over there and sub up to my channel. Why don't you? All right. The next team. What am I doing here? New York Rangers at 99 and a half points. And I think I'm going to get uh, uh, 99 and a half, I think, is the number for the Rangers. What did they get last year? They finished with 110 points last year. And every and I know New York Rangers fans are going to be like, how could that it's over for sure. What are you talking about? All, you know, well, the East just got super strong. You're not going to be getting easy points from Detroit, Ottawa, Buffalo, and I know you don't play them very often, but you still play them. And yes, I do think it's going to be over 99 and a half points for them. However, I wasn't a big fan of the Trocek pickup. Um, how I think Alexis Lafreniere is going to have a huge year. I'm just not so sure he's going to have a huge year on the right side. I got to see that. I think Kako is going to have a better year. I think uh, Hedo will take over, take Trocek's spot in the second line center role. And overall, this team will still do well in the regular season. It's just the five-on-five five play has to improve for New York Rangers. And I don't see how they've done anything to do that besides the improvement of their young players in that area. And that could be enough. So I am taking over 99 and a half. Um, but I do think they're going to have less points than they did last year. We'll see if I'm right. Could be wrong. Could go either way. You got Shesterkin. I love the defense. I mean... 
There's a lot of good things about the Rangers. Don't get me wrong. I'm not slamming them. It's just I am concerned about their five-on-five -five play, especially come the playoffs. All right, next. Ottawa Senators at 86.5. They finished with 93. So you're talking about a 13-point increase from last year. And, I mean, that's predicated by the fact that they got uh, Giroux and, uh, of course, Dabrinka, right? Great top six. Great top nine, actually. Um, but the defense still is kind of the same. Uh, Brandstrom could take a step up. I actually liked Brandstrom last year. He, he was pretty good. He definitely focused on the defensive part of his game. Maybe the offense will start uh, coming up here. I think he's going to be a really good defenseman. They've been, they've been patient with him, and uh, he has improved somewhat every year. And I just don't see that stopping. However, the right side with Hamannick and Zaitsev in the top six is not very good. Uh, that being said, Sanderson, the young buck kid coming up, could easily take that spot. Um, it's a lot to ask a kid. That as young as Sanderson is to take a spot like that, but I could definitely see him doing it. He's just so good, and they love him so much for very good reasons because uh, he's got everything. It's just a question of whether he's going to be able to do it at such a young age. Same as Lassie Thompson. Is he going to be ready this year? I think those guys will be ready in this de and added into this defense. Maybe not this year, though. And if that's the case, I'm not sure they're going to get over that 86.5 points. Um, because, and I've mentioned this several times, Detroit, Buffalo has gotten better. So many teams have gotten better in this division. It's not that I don't think they're a better team by that much. It's that it's going to be a fight in this division to get points, I think. So... I'm going to go slightly under, but I probably won't give this to my clients, uh, which you can become part of for free in the comment section. I'll send the link there. Uh, I am a professional handicapper. We made $60,000, 6000 to 60000 depending on what you bet per unit last year, and you can get in for free. Also, sub up to my channel and tell me what you think. All right, next, Philadelphia Flyers. Uh it's going to be a tough, it's got to be a tough year for the Philadelphia Flyers. Even with, the the thing you got going for them is Tortorella. However, they finished with 61 points in the over-under 78 and a half. I, I just can't see it, man. I just can't see that happening in Philadelphia. Uh, Tortorella is great. When he took over Columbus, he definitely made that team better but it, he didn't do it the first year. The first year with Tortorella is usually about changing the environment in the locker room and uh, how things are done in the organization and how things are done on the ice. And that can be quite the learning curve for a lot of, a lot of players. Uh, also, it, it weeds out the people that aren't going to make it in Tortorella's system. So that's pretty much, it's, a, it's usually a weeding out process for Tortorella's first year. In which case, I don't think Philadelphia is going to be much better than they were last year. Certainly on paper that nothing has really changed. Uh, already Ellis is going to be hurt again. Sean Couturier is going to play more. So that's going to help because uh, he was injured last year. Ho hopefully he has an injury-free season. Faraby as well. Um, you know, I think they could have more points than last year, but I don't think they're going to have 78 and a half. I'm going under here for sure. Tell me what you think, Philadelphia Flyers fans. Uh, and comment and go down into the comment section, get your free link to bpalpicks.com to make money and have fun betting on sports. All right, next, Pittsburgh Penguins. And Pittsburgh, it's like, just take over. Every time. It doesn't make sense. Like, if you look at their lineup, you go, okay, Malkin could be injured again. Zucker isn't all that great. Uh, 
Kasperi Kapanen needs a rebound season. Uh, defense, Jan Rudo is kind of overrated. Jeff Petrie's a nice little pickup. Uh, whatever. This team is probably average, but it's Crosby and Coach Sullivan led. And the uh, culture and system in this team wins every time. It just wins. They just freaking win, period. It doesn't even seem to matter who is on the ice. They can have injuries and all day. It doesn't matter. They win. So I'm taking over one and a half, one and one and a half, because they, I will never underestimate a Crosby Sullivan led team. So ever as, uh, as my good friend uh, says, Projo, I'm going to keep on taking them to beat the odds until I see otherwise. Yeah. All right. San Jose Sharks. They had finished with 77 last season. season. They opened at 83 and a half. And they're putting them basically as the same amount of points this season. I think this is under. I think the, the error in the room here is that they're kind of rebuilding. After losing Burns, there's a lot on the horizon about Eric Carlson. They have said that they want to sign Timu Meyer. So that'll be some uplift, I guess you would say, in this room. And I did like the kind of move, Oscar Limblom, But those moves are kind of like shots in the dark young players to add to this lineup to get this rebuild going quick, right? It all spells rebuild to me any way they can find it. They found some younger players to be able to play, try to draft and create competition in uh, pre during the season and grow. And that's what I get from this team. It's sort of like on the fly, trying to rebuild as they go here as much as they can possibly remove some of these contracts over time. Capo Kakinen as a goaltender, I, I'm not sure is a number one at 26 years old. We'll see. He's got the talent, but is he ready yet? And James Reimer isn't, so you don't really have a number one. Uh, the division has gotten better. Vegas will have a full year of Eichel. Uh, Edmonton's going to be better. Calgary, yeah, not so sure. Um, Vancouver will be like, it, it's going to be tough for them to win. Anaheim's going to be better. And I don't think they're much better. So I got to go under. I might even go big time under on San Jose. Tell me what you think, San Jose Sharks fans. Sub up and comment in the comment section. Next, Seattle Kraken. And they got them at 83 and a half after having 60 last year. And I, I get it. I mean, they did get... Oliver Bjorkstrand, which I think was a fantastic move. Uh, you know, it's it's a it's, but here's the reason why I think these are fantastic moves. Andre Burakovsky uh, also he kind of needs a, a center to pass to him, and I don't really see that. He's going to probably have to play with Beniers, and I think that's likely where he'll play. I think they're good players, and I think they got better. I just don't think they got that much better. 20 points better. Goaltending, Grubauer's got to bounce back. Uh, anybody who knows me knows I've never been a big Grubauer guy to begin with, even though he almost he did so well as he did in Colorado. But they play a system in Colorado and have forwards in Colorado that can make goaltenders look a lot better than they are. I think Grubauer is a little better than he was last year. It's the first time playing with in front of all of these players, so... Got to give him some rope that way. But I don't think he's that great of a goaltender. And defense-wise, it's okay. It's an average defense at best. So not the greatest goaltender. Average defense, better for better scoring, which will be nice because the new fans will get to see more goals scored by their team. But I don't think they reach those heights of adding 20 more 23 more points to their season I just don't see it so under for me for 
Seattle. Next, St. Louis Blues, 95 and a half. Interesting that they put St. Louis so far down here. And one of the reasons why I think is Nashville got better. But you know what? I, I'm not really sure. I, I didn't think St. Louis was going to do as well as they did last year. So, but I don't think they're going to fall that much. What did they get last season? 109? Interesting. That they think they're going to fall 14 points. Uh, not really sure why. If they could do with what they did last year with what they had, um, besides the fact Jordan, if Jor Jordan Bennington doesn't replicate his playoff performance, then I could see it. They're in trouble. I just have a feeling Bennington's going to be okay. He has no pressure from Thomas Grice there. And so I, I think he's going to be okay. I'm not a big fan of the Letty pickup, but Perunovic will probably take his spot in the lineup. I would hope so. However, paying him $4 million a year doesn't really make it seem like they think Perunovic is going to be ready. I, I, the defense is average, and it appears to me that after Armstrong went to Nashville, Arizona, they threw the analytics team in the closet and said, I don't want to talk to you. Because you don't pick up Nick Letty and give him $4 million a year if you, if you pay attention to analytics at all. You don't have Marco Scandella and you you know, and even Colton Pareko is pretty overrated. Not a big fan of the defense, but their offense is so good, I can't see them falling that much. I mean, look at the, uh, Barbashev of Shen and Koshin is a fine third line. Offensively, they can outscore. In the regular season, that's what counts pretty much. So I'm going over here, and, uh, you know, I think they make the playoffs. Uh, below Nashville, sort of a bubble team in that division, as far as I'm concerned. What do you think, St. Louis fans? Sub up and let me know in the comment section. Also, I'm a handicapper for a living. If you would like to get some free plays for a while and see how much money you can be made, I'm going to put the link in the comment section here. You hit the link with the Telegram app, and you can be part of the frolic right away. Uh, next, Tampa Bay Lightning over under 103 after finishing with 110 points last season. Um, yeah, they lost Palat and they lost McDonough. Those are going to be tough to fill, man. Tough skates to fill. Cal Foot, they've been grooming him for a long time. I like him. I, th I think he's ready to really step it up here. But, I mean... He's got to prove to me he's as good as McDonough yet, and he hasn't yet. So, you know, there's a drop-off. Philip Myers, he hasn't been able to do anything. I don't, I don't know what they think Philip Myers is going to do. They gave him a contract at $2.5 million. He must have turned something around in the offseason, I think. Because he was looking like he was going to be really good and then just went to the tank. Some guys, they get the money and they forget what got them there. And maybe, you know, leaving Philadelphia, going to Nashville, and Nashville kind of throwing you aside too, especially Nashville, who have been awesome at developing defensemen. If they said, you know, we can't help you, maybe he woke up here. And this could end up being fantastic for Tampa Bay, but I got to see it. Um, and like I said, you lose Palat. However... I think Ross Colton's going to make up a lot of that this year. I really love that guy. I really love him. I don't think that's that much of a loss. I, I, it's a loss to lose plot. Don't get me wrong, especially in the playoffs. But in the regular season, I think they're going to be fine. I'm going to go a little bit over here at 103. One of the reasons is I think Tampa Bay, a lot of the times, they kind of coasted in, in the regular season. Where I have a feeling this year they don't, they're not going to have the feeling they're going to be able to afford to do that with the loss of some of the guys they already had. In which case, I think they're going to be playing to win a lot of games harder than they would before for fear of missing completely because this division just got a little better. 
I'm not going to give this to my clients, which you can be part of. I'll put the uh, put a link in the comment section. You just hit it, and for free, you can get my picks. Check them out for a while. See how much money there is to be made, which is lots. And uh, you can sub yourself up. Also, sub up to the channel as well. Okay, next. And this is a really interesting one as well. The Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, it opened at 105 and a half last year, and they finished with 115 points. They're only giving them two extra. And I'll tell you, there's only one reason why they see a drop here, and that's goaltending. I, I, I'm not giving this to, to my clients for sure, because I have no idea what Matt Murray is going to do. Uh, I've been really thinking about this. On the surface, this is a disaster. Right, Matt Murray had, was, had what he looked okay after he came back from injury last year. He looked good. He had some good games. That's what they're going on here. They believe that Matt Murray, after having basically three years of ass goaltending, because he came back from injury and looked good for a bit, he's going to rock it. Their goaltending coaches must have been all over this. They must believe that they can get Matt Murray to be where he was before. If they do. I think Toronto wins a cup this year, honestly. It's all about that to me. Because I don't see Sam Sonoff turning it around. He was, I cannot see a goaltender be that diabolically bad and turn it around. But if Matt Murray can, they're good. The question is whether he can or not. I got to say no. So I'm. they said 107.5 points. Even with average goaltending, this group, which can we, now admit that their defensemen are actually good. Riley, Brody, Muzzin, as long as he doesn't get injured, uh, forget about Hole. You're putting Lila Grin up there. Hole's not playing in that top four. Are you freaking kidding me? Uh, Giordano and, you know, they got to try to find a play. And then hold, 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 put Hole down here. It's a good defense. And forward-wise, not much going on for offense from their bottom six, but their top six is some of the best in the league. Certainly enough to get them in the playoffs. I'm going to say it's like right on the money to me, 107 points. Uh, over, but like I said, I'm not so sure. Tell me what you think, Toronto Maple Leafs fans. Over or under 107 and a half. If you enjoy making money on hockey, and all the other sports as well. I'm going to put a free link in the Telegram app, or in the comment section. Yeah, get the Telegram app, hit the button, just hit the link, and you'll go right in there for free. And you can sit there for a while, make some money, and then uh, you become a member. All right, Vancouver Canucks. And I, I like Vancouver this year. Over 92 and a half. I don't like their defense. You know, I don't like their defense at all. But, I mean, this top 12 is the best in, maybe the best in the division besides possibly Edmonton. And that's only because Edmonton has that amazing top six. But uh, I don't think Pearson will be there. You know, Pedersen, Miller, Garland, Horvat, Besser, Mikhaev was a beautiful pickup. Beautiful pickup. Uh, Vasily Podkolzin will probably take another step. Uh, hearing great things about Kuzmenko. And, uh, you know, Nils Hoglander is in the fourth line here. Amazing. Defense, on the other hand, is maybe one of the worst in the league, to tell you the honest truth. Fortunately for them, they have Thatcher Demko, and I think Spencer Martin is plenty good enough as a backup there. But Thatcher Demko is a beast. Maybe, I think, the third best goaltender in the league. Will the defense hold up? Um, I think for some, I, I think uh, I think it will. I think it'll hold up good enough for that amazing top twelve, for them to get more points than ninety two and a half. It is, yeah. I like ninety two and a half over for sure. Tell me what you think, Vancouver fans. Sub up to my channel. Head down into the comment section. Get the Telegram app. Hit the link, and you get free picks that make money every day 
for a while. Once you see how much money you make, you can sub up. Okay. Vegas Golden Knights. Interesting team. And even more interesting number. Over under 97 and a half. And I simply have to go under because of the goaltending. I just, I, I, I have no faith in Thompson yet. He looks like he's out of position a lot. He, he's still putting it together, and now you're asking him to be a number one because of Laner being injured. And that's really the only reason. I think Patch, losing Pacioretty is, what is a problem, but they went without Pacioretty last year, and they didn't have a full season of Eichel. I think Eichel's going to have a fantastic year this year. Heard a lot of poo-pooing on him from getting only 24 points in 34 games last year. But the guy come off of a back surgery and didn't play for a year. That's not bad production for a guy who did that. This year, he's going to get back in the groove again, at least be a point-a-game player. However, 97.5 points is going to be tough. I love their defense. I like... I don't mind their I don't mind their offense at all. It's all about goaltending. If the goaltending holds up, they're over. If not, they're under. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think, Vegas fans. Also, hit the link down there. Get yourself free sports picks at uh, in the, on the Telegram app. Get the Telegram app and hit the link, and you're right in there. Okay, Washington Capitals. Um, interesting number for the Washington Capitals for their over and under. 95 and a, or sorry 93 and a half they finished with 100 points last year and they're just getting older and I think that's the main reason but they've got guys like Connor McMichael that are ready to blow and I think he will do very well this year he'll take out Connor Brown and be on that Strom Mantha line this team is Still good. Ovechkin, still Ovechkin. Kuznetsov gets underrated all the time. He's still a point-to-game player, and he's only 30 years old. Uh, I think Oshie's probably going to fall a little bit. The defense, Fahervi's fantastic. So underrated, it's crazy. Carlson's still going to put up his points, and Dmitry Orlov is good. Nick Jensen is meh. It's an average team. And an average team should get more than 90, what was it? 93 and a half. I think it's over. On the same note, I think if Kemper doesn't, you know, Kemper had a bad playoffs. If Kemper doesn't hit it out of the park, I could see an under here too. It's, but I'm leaning more to the over than the under for sure. What do you think, Washington fans? Let me know in the comments section. And finally, the Winnipeg Jets. Over under 88 and a half. And I'm just going to be blunt here and say I'm totally under here. What did they have last year? Nine. They had 89 points last year. I don't see this team getting doing having as good a year as they had last year. And it wasn't even a good year last year. I know. Um, really, it all depends on how Dylan Sandberg and Billy Hinala project into the lineup, but they're going to be young. And um, they don't have good backup goaltending anymore, and David Riddich, probably the worst, maybe the worst in the league. And Connor Hellebuck got overworked last year. So really, what makes anyone think they're going to be better than last year? Different coach? Rick Bonus is going to change things around that much? I know one thing. Rick Bonus is going to be banging defense down their ass constantly all the time. And I don't know how much Shifley and Wheeler are going to want to listen to that because they haven't played worth a poop defensively. Last year they were terrible. And now they're going to have to listen to a guy. Like, Bonus doesn't take any guff. He, he doesn't – there's no arguing with Rick Bonus. You either do it or you're out. So – and I think that's the reason why Rick Bonus was hired. They, they, it appears they have a problem in the room, and a guy like Rick Bonus is just simply, he only does it his way. There's no having discussions about it. So 
We'll see how much they like that and if they're still around. I have a feeling you could see a whole bunch of change in Winnipeg here. I don't think the season's going to go well. And I think behind the scenes, they know that and actually don't even mind that because they want this is going to be a great draft and they need to kind of build this up quick. All right. Comment in the comment section, Winnipeg fans. Tell me what you think. Over, not over under 88 and a half. Also, I'm going to put a link down there. It's for Telegram app. It's for I'm a professional handicapper where people make a crap load of money. If you want to get in there for free, just hit the link, have the Telegram app, you're in. And I'll let you sit there for a while and make money until you feel comfortable and then you can become a member. All right. That's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I have to give to you today. All right there. So sub up to the channel. Thanks for listening in. Tell me what you think about it. Have a great day. Okay.